Hi everybody, this is a uh, this is gonna be one of a couple video reviews for uh, the PPS 43C in specific. Um, this gun has just been starting to be produced in uh, Poland, and uh, it's imported by Inter Ordnance, or I believe it's Inter Ordnance at uh, I.O. Incorporated, and. Uh, more or less, you know, there's been kind of a demand for this type of thing, and, uh, they're, you know, they kind of did this and did that, and, uh, they're starting to get them imported. So, uh, before I go too much into the gun, I'm just going to go through a little bit of, a uh, brief history. And, more or less, there is the PPSH-41 that was developed, and, uh, you know, of course, 1941. And it was, at the time, you know, it was by far just a, just a, an amazing gun, you know, he used a 71 round drum mag and 35 round stick mag and it shot 7.62 by 25 uh, and you know at the time it was just very very good it was also referred to as the burp gun it had a, an amazing rate of fire and you know it's just kind of more or less the submachine gun of the time now this is the PPSH or sorry no, sorry about that it's a PPS 43 uh, but in the 42 because of uh, more or less tank crews, paratroopers, people that needed it to be more compact you know was not, the 41 was not compact by any means so there was the PPS 42 and then even that needed a couple more redesigns and then this is the PPS 43 and this is the final model and then also the originals were developed or sorry not developed but uh, were produced from 1943 to 1946 because well Russia back then was you know, they were solely just, they're kind of messed up because of the economy and all that stuff that was happening in World War II at the time. But, more or less, you know, had a very short run originally, but there's about 2 million plus made. So, you know, definitely not a short amount of them made within that time. Alright, now, that's some basic history about it. Gonna get more into this guy. Like I said, it is uh, manufactured in Poland. Um, I believe the town is Radom. It's also referred to the Radom plant also. And it's made by Pioneer Arms Corporation. And as it says right there, it's a 7.62 by 25 caliber. The same as the 41 and the 42. Um, I'm going to flip sides here. And right there, you can see uh, the importation marks. I.O. for, I believe it's Inner Ordnance Incorporated. And then Monroe, North Carolina. So, right there, you know, it's definitely, uh, I mean not some ugly stamp as most people do and this is not unlike the uh, 41s because of uh and the 42s because of how it's manufactured it cannot accept the 71 drum rounds um i've actually read about some modifications to some uh, original 41s and uh, there's a couple companies that make the 43s and 42s that there's a conversions form so you can use that 71 drum mig, but something I'm probably not going to do on this guy. So, uh, you know, I'm going to mount it on the tripod here and go from there for this gun. Alright, actually, before I do that, uh, I'm going to mention this real quick. I um, got a couple calibers set up here, and this one right here is a 7.62 by 25. Um, and the, right to the right of it is the 9mm. You can see the differences in those. Now, about what, four years later, there was the AK-47 with a 7.62 by 39. You know, so definitely, I mean, more or less with that, they just went with much more gunpowder, a little bit of a different shell design for the bullet, and uh, then we have the standard 223 for AR-15s and whatnot. All right, just figured I'd put that in there too for a little bit. Anybody was wondering about this bullet size comparison and whatnot. So, all right, I'll mount this on the tripod here. Second for adjustment. All right, now at first, uh, a lot of people are probably thinking, okay, so is this a class three SBR? Uh, you know, the stock here. It is. Uh, it's non-functional. It's purely for looks. They've welded it in multiple areas on the outside and then on the inside also. So you are not allowed to actually, you know flop the buttons and use it. Now it's very unfortunate, but for the fact of it being a pistol, you know, I mean, at least they kept that design on there and they put the extra money into it, so 
you don't have that funky, there's something missing look to it. Um, so it's definitely a plus about it. Now, it's kind of weird too, you know, you look at this gun, especially online, uh, the retail price for it was 349 originally. And, you know, you look at it, eh, it might be a cheapo gun, blah, blah, blah. blah. Now, especially in the front here, you'll just see it's kind of a it's kind of a heat shield, but it's actually a front forearm also. There's really nothing between the barrel and that. And I'll have a more accurate after I uh, shoot it here. Uh, more of an accurate, you know, if it gets hot or whatnot. But for holding it, there's definitely a couple of issues. Uh, there's only real four four real positions that I can think of for one holding it, and uh, it's on the Meg itself. Higher of, um, up on the magazine well with kind of your uh, right thumb right here above the ejection port to the side of course um, and then right here you have this kind of it's kind of sticking out from the mag well it definitely looks like it was designed to put your hand here and then your thumb definitely looks like that's how that was designed for because when you're holding it it has a very natural style feel to it um, and then right up here you have this swing swivel it works really good kind of planting your thumb against it and then your fingers has a very natural feel to it, but then again, like I said, uh, after shooting it, I don't know if it really heats up a lot. So something I'll definitely uh, figure out when I go to shoot it here. And I'll have a separate review on that, so I don't go on too long. Um, again, it only uses 35 round stick mags. So anywhere that has 20 rounds or 10 rounds limitations, I don't think you can actually get these. Unfortunate, but... Um, you know, also the pistol grip on this guy, it's also extraordinarily comfortable for some reason. Um, you know, I was really debatable on that too for for the gun being as much as it's going to be. You know, I was just like, well, I really don't know about that. It has a very, very comfortable grip. Um, let me see, the safety. Now, this safety is definitely one of the most interesting ones. I was trying to mess with it, you know, like one finger, you know. Assume me, that's how most people uh, activate safeties. I'll get closer here. Safety's right here. Push back and then back forward is up. Uh, but as you can see, there's this ridge and whatnot. You gotta kind of use two fingers to pull it back, and then you can use just one. And there's a big gap there too for just like a thumb. If you try doing it with just one finger to bring it back, it really hurts your finger. It kind of grinds into it. Besides that, I mean, it's pretty pretty basic safety. When uh, as I'll kind of zoom up on here too, when you uh, because this was the standard design back then, kind of just blocked the bolt, so you weren't able to bring the bolt back. And it uses your standard. Uh, it's pretty much like an AK-47 sight. You have your L. Shit, I can't see the best of how it's lining up. But you have your L, and then in the front you have that standard post. So it's kind of like the standard AK sights many years later. And it's not bad, except for your rear sight, uh, instead of being elevation, you know, just like a thing that goes back and forth like on the AK, it's a flip sight. It's for 100 meters and 200. Um, oh, definitely one thing I'm gonna mention, uh, this will probably be on the shooting review also, but as you can see, there's two sling swivels right here, and then uh, up on the front right here. Now, this is definitely a gun that I see a sling helping out for accuracy, especially since the fact the stock is not usable. And something that, you know, definitely something I'll see here. So, definitely gonna try that out. And then this front muzzle flash, it's a flash suppressor, believe it or not. This, you know, instantly just kind of looks like it's cheapo and like might bend and whatnot. It's stamp steel and it's it's very, very solid. It's not going to bend or break. So definitely no safety issues there. Some people kind of look at it weird, but definitely not cheap. And actually, this gun, we weighed it. It weighs just about 10 pounds. So very heavy gun, except when you're actually holding it, it does not seem like it. So, um, what's... Well, all I'm going to really go into for this little part, uh, I'll do another disassembly and function uh, review for it also. I'll probably post a link, but uh, be sure to check the other videos I got for this. Thanks for watching.